Yeah, look at that. There are many England fans who turned up here, not just here in East London, but all the way through England's tour from the 26th when it was the Boxing Day Test match and all the way to Cape Town. And as they followed everything go around, the whole tour go around, what they're getting is an experience of South Africa as they meet people in the various cities. Right, welcome back. It is the first KFC T20 International, South Africa against England. And it comes to you from Buffalo Park here in East London. The story is that it's England who won the toss and they've decided they'll field first. Let's find out then what the story is out in the middle in as far as conditions are concerned because there's some wind blowing and I suppose I'll have to pay attention to that. Hayes, what have you got for us? Yeah, thanks, Pom. This is really windy out in the middle. Now, it's just died down a little bit. I've been here for the last 40 minutes, I suppose, and it's been about a 35 k per hour wind that's been coming from the sea and has been coming across the ground towards that mound, actually, the big mound with the spectators. So I've got no doubt the wind is going to play a, a factor here, and Sipo's out here as well. He's been struggling with his uh, with his camera to hold it up and, uh, and to keep working with it, but it's a real strong wind from time to time. So that brings dimensions into play. So let me go to the centre here and let's just have a look at the dimensions. And we'll just have a bit of a, a look at the moment and you can see the, the straight dimensions. I'll get into these uh, a little bit now. And you can see also the square dimensions as well and, and importantly also behind me. OK, so let's just break away from that a little bit and let's talk closer about these dimensions. So if I look up at Alex, now Alex is right up the top of this stand. If I look up at Alex, from that batting area to Alex is 77 metres. Now that's a big win, that's a big hit on this ground, particularly when the wind, and it's blowing me now as it is, particularly the wind's going to take the ball across a little bit away from Alex. So it's 77 to him. Now if I go back into the crease and I go square, and I have a look at Harrow, and Harrow's 65 metres there to that boundary, OK? So that also is a reasonable hit, but he's going to benefit enormously because of the wind. So I'm sure the batsmen are going to be targeting that side, OK? So that's 65. However, if I look the other side as well, I've got Linda on the other side. Now, Linda is not going to see too many balls coming his way. The wind is so strong that I think guys on the boundary line there are going to be absolutely key where Linda is, absolutely key because I'm sure the ball is going to hang in this wind and the guys are probably not even going to try and hit boundaries so hit sixes in that area because the wind is so strong so there's one more to go and I'm going to go to Sandals as well now Sandals is up there and this is 57 meters behind so that's a little bit of an opportunity so that's where you certainly can look to score some uh, some boundaries but there's no doubt this wind being so strong is going to be Harrow at 65 metres and also towards that mound as well, which is around about 67 towards that mound. OK, so it's a little bit uh, it's a little bit stronger there. So the other thing I need to just mention here is that this is a very high scoring boundary ground. It's only the third one day international we played here. But if you look back at the last 10 domestic games, 58 percent of the runs scored in the domestic games in the last 10 have been scored in boundaries so it's a very very high boundary ground again the wind comes into play sometimes the wind changes and goes that way so it comes into the scoreboard so it's a high boundary game the other thing about it also if you have a look at lbws and also bold 37 percent in the last 10 domestic games 37 percent of the dismissals have been either lbw or bold so that means they're going to use this track it's not going to be particularly quick they're going to use this track they're going to be some cutters and they're going to bowl pretty straight so that's going to be important and also of course spinners are going to play a game all righty the other thing I just want to point out as well, there's going to be slips in position as well at some stage, not many, just initially, but there'll be a keeper. A keeper is going to be standing here. There's Lloyd, by the way. He's uh, on the ground, and I think he might have a little bit of work to do following balls in his area. But the keeper is going to be round about here, but he's not going to be too busy. He's not going to get too many dismissals because only 3% in the last 10 domestic games, only 3% have been caught by the keeper. So slips in the keeper, let's just forget about those guys, they're not going to be needed. So I think it's going to be a game where the batsmen are going to use the win, there's no doubt about it. I think Owen Morgan has made the right choice. He doesn't know what's going to happen here. So I think he's made the right choice because he's going to watch this game unfold and see what happens. So conditions are interesting, the wind is strong, Pommy, and I don't think it's going to change for the, uh, for the entire night. OK, mate, back to you. 
Thank you, Hayes. i tell you what's happened since you've started with that and taken a bit of time. As Bumble said it's taken too long, it's gone. D left. It's just Rob, though, said it's OK. It's OK to come here because he's got a teammate alongside. Nice to see you, Rob. And, and by the way, I'll say again, that is very interesting information. We're not dismissing the information. We're saying, watch those knees. Yeah, get outside the line and yeah, get back upstairs. Rob, <laughs> a good team, England's team, very good team. The approach to 2020, their approach to 2020. No, they're just going to go as hard as they can. They send Josh Butler at the top of the inning so he can come out and try and smash it and get them off to an absolute fly. They have so many players that want to open the batting. The problem for England will be in the middle order. They have very, very good players, Ben Stokes, people like that. But Josh Butler's also their best finisher. That's going to be Joe Denley, Mo and Ali, people like that at the moment. That's what they need to find out. And this run up to the T20 World Cup, where every player fits in at the right spot. All of a sudden, it seems there's so many of these players <laughs> that England have. What's happened? I mean, and that's the question, I think, with many. What's happened? Why all of a sudden are there too many players <laughs> and you're trying to leave some out rather than find some to select? But don't you see, isn't that life at the moment I in cricket? With I... T20 cricket, the kids, they're all playing it. So everyone now, when we all played, we weren't a product of T20 cricket. We had to pick it up in professional sport. These kids are growing up with it now. So you're seeing so many more. And then when it gets to test cricket, there's not as many players, there's not as many obvious picks mm. who can bat for long periods of time. This is just a sign of the times. Excitement, no doubt, Makai Antini, but with Rob saying they'll just go as hard as they can, see what they can get, and that's generally going to be their method. What about South Africa? Considering there's the history of guys playing for places, can they be as free as their opposition? <laughs> That's a very good question, Pommy. <laughs> you know, it, when, when you come to the different countries, you know, when he, he's, he's talking about England, how, you know, how many openers do they have? Mm. You look at South Africa, they actually still trying to figure out and find out who's the best opener for the 2020. We will be opening with Queenie. In actual fact, we only have one person who can open is Queenie. You know, South Africa is trying to figure out who's going to bet with him. You know, this is one of the things that South Africa, they need to have uh, more of an open-minded that they can be able to just let the players play. And then you can choose right from them and see which one is capable of doing the particular job. As, as a coach, and you have been a coach in recent yeah. times, do you tell them a method to play in 2020 cricket? Can you do that? Should there be a method for South Africa that says this is how we go, as there is a method with the players that they have that England adopt? And that's, that's a different. If you look at how the IPL you know, goes, mm. there's no one pointing finger that says, I want you to play in a different way. Mm. This is what South Africa need to adapt and being able to say, guys, this is a short game. You're not going to have six or seven overs mm. that you need yourself <laughs> to get in. The moment you see the ball to be hit, you need to hit it. Mm. You know, those are the kind of things that I think the coaches, they need to adapt and then being able to change within a certain period of time that you can give the Elks to just explore themselves man, and, and have a freedom of play. Mm. Okay, well, no doubt we'll get more thoughts from Rob Key and from Makai Antini, as well as the rest of our commentary team as we watch this first KFC T20 International. It's a road towards that October T20 World Cup up in Australia. We'll see how that goes. After the anthems, we join the commentators. Skipper! <laughs> 